Hello, how to file W2 and W3 electronically for 2022? To file W2 and W3 electronically, you will need to uh, register with Social Security Administration and you can do that on their website at ssa.gov slash employer if that's your first time. And then you pull your payroll recall for 2022 that you want to file for. And you will complete W-2 for each employee and they, um, their website will generate W-3 for you. W-3 is the total of all the W-2s that you entered. You will compare that to your payroll uh, record and then you will submit your W-2 and W-3 to Social Security Administration. Do you file W-2 with IRS or SSA? You file W-2 with SSA, Social Security Administration. You file W-2 for each employee that you have in your business. You file that with Social Security Administration. You file 1099 for contractors and you file that with IRS. So we are going to file W-2 and W-3 online. And that is the method that I will recommend. So this video is going to be about how to file that online. And when you file online, you do not mail anything to IRS. You do not mail anything to Social Security Administration. You submit that automatically online and you print copies that you save for your business. You will, even though you will file W2 and W3 with Social Security Administration, you will file um, Form 944 uh, if you are required to file on your federal tax return or you will file Form 941 if you are required to file quality federal tax return, you will file either one of those two forms with IRS. And IRS will reconcile W-2 and W-3 that you file with SSA with one of those two forms, Form 944 and Form 941 that you file with IRS. IRS will reconcile your payroll on those two to make sure they match. So when you are filing W-2 and W-3 online, what I will recommend is if you are required to file Form 944, for instance, I will recommend you complete, you fill out Form 944, and I have a video that showed how to complete, how to fill out Form 944 for 2022. So you fill out that form, you will print it out when, or you will fill out, you save it, and then you go ahead and e-file W-2 and W-3 with Social Security Administration. So when, before you submit that, when you are reviewing your W-3, you will compare that to your Form 944 to make sure everything match, matches the way it's supposed to. If there is an adjustment, that's the right time to make that adjustment. And then you can go ahead and submit your social security, your W-2 and W-3. You can submit that online to Social Security Administration. And then you can print your Form 944, sign it, make a copy for your business, and you can mail it. And if you are going to mail it with a payment, you do that. So how do you e-file Form W-2 and W-3, forms W-2 and W-3 with Social Security Administration for 2022. When you log into their website, and it will be ssa.gov slash employer, you will see business um, service online, and you will click on that. 
So it will prompt you to log in if you have registered already. Otherwise, you register it as your first time. Oh, and I will recommend that you record your um, information because if you do not remember months later or a year later, you might have to call them to get the password mailed to you for you to reset your password. So you, so you will log in if you know you are an existing user and you read the user certification and you will agree. And uh, and as a user, an existing user, every 90 days your password will expire. So if your existing password is uh, 90 days old, it is more than 90 days old, it will prompt you to change your password. You will do that. And you will have to go back and log in again with the new password. So when you get to your main account page, you will have report wages to social security. But on the left side bar, you will have option to edit any information in your account. And as a new um, user, when you register for the first time, you will be required to enter the information related to your business. And later on, your business information is going to pull from uh, the profile area. So if Later, you notice that something is not accurate about your business information. Yeah, you will go to the any account and for area or view any account and for area to change whatever you want to change. And also, employer information is in the same sidebar where you can know the things related to your business. So. When you are filing W2 and W3 for 2022, you will click on Report Wages to Social Security. So, and you can read, you know, what it is asking for. So that's the main uh, page. And when you click on that Link, that um, first link that we just came from, it will require you accept the electronic wage reporting agreement. So you click on accept after you read it. And that's wage reporting attestation. And you will go to, from that page, you will go to the next page, Electronic Wage Reporting, EWR. And there you have multiple options. If you are trying to amend or correct a W2, W3 that you filed previously, you have the option to do that. If you are uploading a file because there is a requirement, if you have more than Let's see here, 50 employees to um, enter in the, to enter the W2 in the system. So up to 50 form W3 can be saved at a time to be resumed, submit at a later date. Each, okay. So let's see where they talk about that. I'm not seeing it here, but they do have, okay, so create, Fill in the form, save, print, and submit form W2 and W3 with up to 50 forms. W2, W2 per W3. So one W3 will be linked to up to 50 W2s. There is no limit on the number of form W3 an employer can submit, even for the same employer identification number, EIN. 
they do have the option where you can upload a file, but I'm not going to discuss that. And it's more for when you have a lot of employees. For us that have few to zero employees, if you do not have, let's say, when you file for your business EIN with IRS, you say that at some point you have employees, therefore you are required to file Form 944, for instance, once a year, you are not going to file W-2 and W-3 if you have not hired an employee yet. If you have a next call, you, the owner that is working in the business, you are the first employee of your LLC task as an escort or your escort. However, if your business is very young and you didn't collect any salary from your business, your wages is zero. Therefore, you do not need to file W-2 and W-3 with Social Security Administration if you didn't pay any wages during the year, in my opinion. However, if IRS require you file Form 944, you have to file Form 944. Most of the areas where you have zero dollars, where amount and amount is required, you leave a blank up to line nine where you put zero, and then you complete all that Form 944 with your business information, print it out and mail it in. But since you didn't pay yourself anything, there is no W-2 or W-3 to submit to Social Security Administration unless you want to submit zero W-2s. I have now come across IRS, web, IRS information that you need to submit W-2, W-3, even if you pay zero wages yet, but they have, they have um, instructions, and you can find that on their website or on our, our blog under Federal, uh, under a yeah, federal tax return uh, page, you can find the link to the instructions there as well, and you can read through, you know, to see what the requirements are. But from personal uh, experience, the few years that I didn't collect anything from my business, I didn't file W-2 and W-3 with Social Security Administration. But I filed Form 944 with zero wages to IRS every year. And we'll come back to these instructions later at the, when we are done filing social um, filing with Social Security Administration. So, to file your W-2s for your employees for 2022, you will click on Create Resume Form W-2, W-3, 9. So again, you are filing for your employees because you pay salary. If you are the only employee in your business and your business is a next up, you are an employee, therefore you will uh, file W-2 for yourself. If you are a sole proprietor, and you didn't hire an employee, you, the sole proprietor owner, you are not an employee of your solo business. Therefore, you do not file W-2 for yourself. When you are filing your 1040, you will file Schedule C and you will pay self-employment tax on your profit, on all your profit from your solo business there. But the W-2, is for employees that in case you hire people to work for you, you pay them salary or wages, you will file for them. Same thing will go for LLCs that file 1065. You, the partner or the member, you are not an employee of your LLC. Even if you draw, you you know, you make some draw from your business for yourself, you will be... Um, 
when you you file your 1065, you generate K1s. When you are filing your 1040, you will be paying uh, income tax and social security and Medicaid on the profits that is allocated to your share in the business. But when you are an S corp or LLC tax as an S corp, you, the officer or the owner of the business, you are an employee. You will collect salary and then you will collect distribution later as well if your business is generating a lot of revenue. But you will pay uh, federal income tax, social security tax, Medicaid tax on the salary portion of your compensation. So that salary is what you are going to use to file W-2 and W-3 with SSA on yourself. And if you have other employees in the business, you'll be filing W-2s for them as well. And all the W-2s will be used to create W-3 for all the total entry. So W-2 is just the total of all your W-2s that you submitted. But W-2 will be for each employee. So you have to have a payroll uh, record and now if you don't use the software you might use payroll spreadsheet to track how much you are paying yourself and how much you are paying every single one person working in your business so that you are able to do this and w2 is created for employees so now you will click on create res resume or resume forms w2 w3 online and It will prompt you to the next page. And on this next page, from W2, W3, and on, you will select the year if the year that is there is now you know, the one you want to file for. You will click on the drop down menu to select your business, and automatically it will pull your business EIN number from what you entered in the system under employer information that is tied to that business name that you selected. And when you are entering information for your business information, make sure you use the legal name that you use to file EIN application with IRS so that you pull the right business name for your business and the EIN number. So, please select the type of W-2 form, regular, or territorial. So, you will click on that drop-down menu and select regular W-2. You will leave the next session. Have you received a reconciliation letter? You leave that alone if that does not apply to you. So, check the exception. So, are you attempting to file W2C. W2C is like an, um, a, a, an amendment. So it's like you are correcting a previously entered W2. So we are not doing any of that. So you will leave the box in check. You leave it alone and you go to uh, continue. You know, you click on continue to move forward. But this is just an example of us selecting a Liberal Consulting LLC in 2022 and it will automatically pull the EIN number and we select regular W2. We didn't check that box and we didn't check exception box either. But then you click on continue. The next page will be will show you the layout, the different steps you will complete before you submit. And the first step will be employer information. So you will Double check to make sure your business information is accurate. And right underneath it, you will have contact person for this submission. Chances that it's going to pull information from your account information, but it might leave contact person for this employer blank. So it's good you complete it. If that's the same person as you, you enter your information in that section. Session. And um, other information, please.
Till they fill in the following if they apply to you. Other EIN use this year for this employer. So if that does not apply to you, just leave a blank. So when you continue down, you'll have kind of payer. So what that means is the type of employment federal tax return from the IRS requires from your business. It could be from 944 to be filed um, Annually is employer annual federal tax return. Uh, it could be form 941 employer quality federal tax return, and you file that on a quality basis. So, what kind of payer your business is? So, it's going to be either form 944 or form 941. Since we are working with business owners, I'm not going to touch base with the other options they have. So make sure you check the right boss that applies to you. In our case, in this example, it is uh, Form 944. So we got that check. What kind of employer your business is? So they have options, but for you and I, it's going to be known apply. Or you can read through to see if your business falls under any one of the above options and you leave the third party sick pay alone if it does not apply to you. You check the type of form you are going to file with IRS, whether it's form 944 or form 941 for the kind of payer your business is, and you check non apply for the kind of employer your business is. And then you click on continue to move to the next. Uh, step. So it's going to pull last year report for you if you file last year with Social Security Administration. If you are a new, if that's your first year, your page might look different. So when you get to your business uh, information page, it's going to show the the W2W2 that you filed last year is going to show that and pretty much is trying to pull information from that one to prefill W2 for you for this year. So you will have WFID which will be the type of file they have like the uh, w -W that you filed the previous year and it will even tell you when you file it and let's go to see so W2 report from last year exists which may be used to profile data for this year report to use those reports select one of the W FIDs below otherwise select continue so you want to profile from that information, you click on the WFID that is showing you if you have more options, if you have more than one, you can choose, but in most instances, it's just going to be one, because if you have one employee or two or few, you are just going to have one submission. So you will select that and you, you, know, and you will continue. And it's been telling us for that one the number of W2s that was in it. So you click on continue. And it's going to pull you to a page that it will show you the, the list of the name of the employees you filed for last year, the social security and so forth. And you will pretty much select who from those employees you want to file W2 for. If there is, if you have new employees, then you have to add them there. But if you have existing employees that you want to find W two for, you will select them. So we have them checked here. So select the W twos for profil this year W twos, and you click on continue. Let's go back here. Yeah. So. To review a W2, select the employee name once you are finished entering from W2, you can preview a W3. So, 
On this page, you have the list of those employees that you selected to, um, to pull the information from last year from if I'm saying it right. But then you are going to do uh, work on each one of them one at a time. So you will click on the first one in the list. The first page will have maybe, let's say, a long list of all your employees that you filed for, for last year. And maybe you select a few that, uh, that stay with you up to this year that you want to file for. And this page is just going to show you those few that you selected, if they are not all of them. And you are going to now select each one of them from here on. So it's going to show you the studies until you are done completing the W-2s. Pretty much it's like the W-2s for this year. But it's going to show, you know, an exclamation point until you are done before it check the studies for you. So let's see what are the options here. So yeah, it's going to show you that until you are done. And when you are done and you go back to that page, it's called W2 list. When you go back to the W2 list, you are going to see the total of all the W2s that you entered. So at this point, if you have new employees, that you want to file W2 for your, you know, uh, create new W2s and uh, start a new W2s. So let's continue here. So now that you click on one um, name, Let's see. If you click on one name on your list, it, it, it as automatically should open that W2 for you. Otherwise, you will click on start a new W2. But usually start a new W2 should be for the employees that you want to add that are now on your list here because they were now with you last year. By last year, I'm talking about 2021. We are in 2023. But we are filing W2 for 2022. Therefore, when I'm saying last year, I'm talking about 2021. Why you file for 2021 that you file early 2022, but for 2021. So I hope it's not confusing. So that is the first W2 for the first employee on the list that you click on. You will make sure the employee social security is accurate. You will um, check the employee address to make sure what you have in your file and what you have in the system is up to date. Otherwise, you are buried. You will have, let me see. Okay, so the employee, first name, middle, initial, and last name, you make sure that there is boxes for each one of them. You make sure you enter the name properly. Okay, so you check your employer, your business, EIN number, the name, and the address as well. So you will pull your payroll spreadsheet and you um, locate that employee total W-2, um, total wages, and you will enter that on line one. So what it will go on line one if your business is complex, you might want to re IRS instructions that I opened earlier to see what will go on line one. Well, basically, line one will be wages, tips, salaries. But let me see here. If we go back to uh, the instructions, let me make it a little bit. Let's see where the let's try fifteen. So boss one wages. So it's going to explain what will go 
on and boss one in detail what is taxable non-cash payment including some French benefits you can read that if you are an ESCO and your share is 2% and more there are some French benefits that are taxable to you or to yeah to those partners so you have to include that in the wages but pretty much you read through it and you will see what is taxable for more for um, for young business businesses is just going to be the wages but again you can read through it do not include a deeper retirement plan and if, but if you have a rough IRA in your business, it will be included. But we are not going to get too complicated here. Let's go back to the the um, W two form. So you will enter um, total wages on line one. And then if you have federal income tax withheld, you will enter it on line two. And let's look at an example of payroll spreadsheet. And we do have free payroll spreadsheet on our website that you can download for free and update it to meet your requirement and i will say that this one is only designed for form 944 it does not have an area for uh, form 940 unemployment tax return so you will for each one of your employees total wages have wages, tips, salaries, other compensation, total wages, you have to enter that for each one of them. And in most cases, while we are still there, that total wages is going to be the same wages subject to social security tasks, subject to Medicaid tasks. If yours is different, you might want to read the instructions and follow and complete your form. So, federal income tax we've had. If you will have federal income tax, it will go online too for the whole year for that employee. Social security wages. If your the employee Correct tips is not going to be a part of this line three. Is it will go to line seven. So line three is just for wages subject to social security tasks. You have you know uh, another exception for the tips as well. But again, for most business owners, it's going to be. Line it is going to be the same as line one. If that's what is your case, you will put that same number on line three. That means you don't have anything for line seven. So social security we've had, you can find that on your payroll spreadsheet as well. And social security we've had from that employee, you will enter that on your form. And later, so medicators we've had from that employee. Uh, the um, wages will go on the W-2 as well. So let's go back. And any area that does not apply to you, just leave a blank. You'll have the state section at the bottom that you will complete with your state uh, abbreviation name, your employer identification number, you will need to find that with your state. Usually when you file for IRM with IRS, 
you will register with your state and your state will assign you an identification number. If sometimes it will be with employer withholding ID, a permit number, sometimes it, it will be that. And a lot of times it could be the same as your federal EIN number, but then the state will add some numbers at the end of that number to make it withholding permit number. Or sometimes it will be a totally different number. But when you are filing W-2 with Social Security Administration, you will file that with your state as well. And that number will be there. So you might want to record that number if you don't have any file. And your line 1 will be the same to put on line 16 for the states. And it will probably be the line 18 as well. And if you withheld income tax for your state, you will put on line 17 and line 19 for local income tax that you withheld. Otherwise, you leave them blank. For line 20, locality name, you will enter your city and you will click on save and go to next W2. If you click on save and go to W2 list, it's going to take you to the list where you have um, on the page where you have the list of the employees that you selected to file W2 for, and then you click on the next employee. Otherwise, if you click on save and go to the next W2, it will automatically open that W2 for that next employee for you. You could also say, save and create a new W2 if you are going to enter for an employee that is not in your system yet. So you have those options. But if you are done for all the employees, then you click on save and go to the W2 list so that you can go to the next step. Mm -hmm. So we talked about that. Yeah, the employee address, you will check that to make sure it's good. So we might be coming to this often. So you can see that for the employee one, in our example, we are using total wages, 270.70. We put it on line one. Let's go back. I don't think. Okay. So federal income tax withheld. We didn't withhold anything. So I'm not showing it here yet, but I completed the wages portion. So for social security wages, I have that same one as uh, line one. And Medicaid wages and tips, I have the same as line one. So Medicaid. The wages and the tips they go together. Only the social security tips is separate. So let's see here. So in this example, we have 270 70 cents for line 135. And uh, we have the taxes 1678 for social security, 393 for Medicare. So you see that because we don't have federal income tax we've held, we left a blank. Social security tax we've held 1678 is entered. Medicaid tax we've held 393 is entered. Original is left blank. So this employee one W2 is completed for the federal portion of it. So everything else that is now related to this employee we left a blank if those options you have something there related to your business you might want to read the instruction to it to see how you will check it for instance line 13 if the employee is a statutory employee then you will check it if you have a retirement plan you will check it if your employer sign up for it and you you have code for uh, 12A and 12B, 12C, that if something is related, you will need to go to that. So let's go to the instructions. Let's go to probably 30. Okay. So at the end of IRS instructions for W2 and W3, they have codes and 
their the details related to those code. So if you have those with your business, you might want to read through it to see which code you need to, you know, to enter in those um, on the W two. If you put in a dollar amount on that line or box, so we are going to go back. And they have some examples for those as well. So we left the blank and then we came to the state. So the state will have the state for Iowa is IA, for instance. So you put, you know, uh, for line 15, you put uh, IA, uh, your state abbreviation. You will put your employer identification number, and then line 16, we have 27070 70 for this employee. We have 27070 70 for the local wages and tips as well, but we, we left state income tax and local income tax blank because we didn't withhold anything on the employer salary for that. And the locality is the city. We put the name there. And then you click and you review this W2 to make sure your entry matches your payroll spreadsheet. When you agree on everything from social security number to the wages, you can click on save and go to W2 list or save and go to next W2. In this case, we click on save and go to next W2. So you have the options there. Save and go to next W2. So automatically open the next one on the list that on the list of the employees name that you selected. And again, it's because we have the employees already in the system by filing for 2021 W2s for them. So if you're a new um your first time doing it, you will click on save and create a new W2. That would be your option. So, okay. Yeah. If by chance you you are pulling information and completing the W two and you spend too much time, not being active on the website is going to log you out. So if you log you out, you have to log back in, and when you log back in, it's going to take you to this familiar report area and you will resume pretty much to the W2 list, but it's not going to save the W2 that you didn't save. So if you're in the middle of completing the W2, it's not going to save that W2 for you. So you have to re-enter, you have to check the employee name, social security, and then enter the wages for line one all the way to line 20 for the state session. And yeah, so in this example, we got out of the system and went back in. So it's going to show you the summary report for the business you are filing for. You will click on the business name and it's going to open the W2s that you are working on. And yeah, you will click on the one you are working on. And as you can see, nothing was saved from the 270.70 that we enter. So you will get them back in there again. You will complete the state option, the state area, and you will enter the state identification number, and you will click on save and go to next W2. So it's automatically going to pull the next employee in the list for you to complete the W2 for 2022. So let me see if I have. So we already explained how to complete this one. So we have the next. Okay. I'm not going to go back to the payroll spreadsheet, but we have one CC 250 from the payroll spreadsheet for the employee two number two and you can see it's on line one line three line five for social security wages medicare wages and tax and the social security we've held let me just do it and we are talking about employee two social security we've held 
1008 Medicare tax withheld 236 and no federal income tax withheld. And just keep this number 3314 for all the tax withheld from the employee wages and for 433.20 for all the wages as well. But let's go back to um, our W-2 form. So we completed for employee number two, we completed the state portion as well, just like the way I explained it earlier. And at this point, we are done with all the employees for the business. So if that's your case, you are now going to click on save and go to the next W-2. You will click on save and go to W-2 list. However, if you have a new employee that work with you in 2022 that you want to add the W-2 for, you click on save and create a new W-2. But if you have, you have entered all the W-2s for all your employees, click on save and go to W-2 list. So now you are back to the W-2 list for your business. It's going to show you the status for those W2s that you try to complete and it's going to have a check mark next to them if you are done with all of them. So if you, are, if you miss one, it will have that exclamation point there. Otherwise, it's going to check it for you. So, it, and it's going to have the employee's name, the social security, and the check mark. And it's going to give you the total, the wages for each employee and the total for all the W-2s that you enter. And from our spreadsheet, you saw 433.20 for total wages. We agree. So when you agree on this, you will click on continue to W-3 preview. If there is a new employee to add W-2 for, you will click on start a new W-2. But we, have, we are done with all the W-2s. We click on Continue to W3 preview. So again, before you do that, it's good to check your payroll spreadsheets to your total wages, 433.20, 433.20. And then you click on uh, continue to W3 preview. So, W-3 is going to be the total of all the W-2s that you submitted. So, that's the time to make sure it matches your Form 944 or Form 941 for the whole year or for all the quarters. I don't know if you need to read anything here, but yeah. Ensure that the information on Form W-2, on Forms W-2 for this employer reconcile with the total of Form 941, 943, 944, or Schedule H that you file with Internal Revenue Services. So, to edit this data, please return to W-2 list and select the W-2 you need to edit. Great. They have the clear instruction there for you. Okay, so the W-3 is going to choose the kind of payer you are. So that's the form you are going to file with IRS or your brief fill out and you have it in your system. So the kind of employer we, we selected are known, apply. So the number of W-2s that you entered to in our example. So the total wages for all those two W-2s, 433.20. Non income tax withheld and the total social security was 2686 and 629 from Medicaid and all the one line 135 are 43320. So you are going to compare the W3 to your form 944 and in fact, um, the total. Line 4 and line 6 may not quite match your line 44 because may not quite match form 944 because form 944 has employee and employer portion together. But 
half of that will be the employee portion. So you can divide it by two, or you can use your spreadsheet to compare. So make sure your W3 match your Form 944, and you make sure your W3 match your payroll spreadsheets. And since that 29 does not quite match our spreadsheets. So let's see here. So that is the layout of W3. So it's just throwing everything you add on every single one of W2s is throwing them together for you. W3 has all the lines, but each one of those lines is the total of all the W2s lines. That is the same line from here. So we have 433.20 for wages and we have the taxes as well. So when you agree that the entry is accurate, you check I agree. But again, the medicators here is one penny off. So there is an adjustment that needs to be made. You either make that on the um, form 944 or you make the adjustment on the W2 that is related to. But make sure things will reconcile. If you file social security, uh, when you are filing for 944, and you know what you're supposed to collect from the employee is salary is a little bit different from what you actually collected, and, and you due to rounding, there is an adjustment line C on form 944 for 2026. 2022, I believe, that you do that adjustment, plus or minus adjustment for the rounding. But you can avoid that if you have both the self security W2, W3 form that you are filing, and you really uh, fill out form 944, but you have not mail it yet, you know, you have those two on hand, you can see where the issue is and make that adjustment. So let's see, um, yeah, so, and what happened is, because this was, you know, you see how I have two decimal points here, it was kind of rounded, and I believe I have 93 here, so I enter 93 in the system, and 93, $3.93 and $2.37, is showing me $6.29, if I'm saying it right. So, that was the issue here. Because I entered $3.93 on the employee one line six for the employee one W2. But since I know that the total for my main employee Medicaid tax with her is 628, this is the total on top is what I'm comparing to my W3. And I know that the Social Security 2686 matches, but the 628 does not match, the Medicaid is 629. So there is an issue here. And I know that Form 944 has 628 um, for employee and 628 for employer combined. So that means I have to go back and I'd make adjustment on that W2 because when I expanded, I know that 5 can be, when you have 5, you just don't round, but when you have six, you round to the nearest dollar. So this will be 392, and this one will be 236. That makes sense. So on that same W3 page, you will check one of the SSN boss. I'll actually just now truncate it. So I'll check the first one, and you will click on continue if everything is accurate. But in our case, we want to make adjustments, so we will click on return to W2 list. So now that we went back to W2 list, we click on the employee that we know that we have an issue with the medicators we've had. So we open that W2, we have 393. 
when is supposed to be 392. So we change it to 392 and we, uh, we scroll to the bottom and click on save and go to W2 list. So that brought us back to the W2 list. We have the total wages that we file. We will click on continue to W3 preview. So on our W3 preview, you'll open your payroll spreadsheet again and you'll compare your totals. And the total wages for Social Security, Medicare, and Federal should match your Form 944. And the Social Security that we've had employee side should match what you think your payroll spreadsheet has that you enter on your Form 944. So we made that adjustment to, you can see that we have 628 and we have 628. So you check agree and you scroll down on the W3 and check SSN will be fully displayed and you click on continue. So at this point, if you want to just come back later and continue it, you can save and quit. So uh, otherwise, if you want to continue, you click on continue. But in this example, we save on save and quit and it show up the option. Do you really want to exit it? You click on yes. If you want to continue it, you can click on no, but we click on yes. So when later you want it to continue, you log back in it to FSA slash employer and you pretty much click on reporting wages to social security and you click on create resume form W2W3 online. So it'll take you to submit a report and you'll click on that or continue. It'll take you to the W2 list where you have all the employees and the service will be checked for them. You know, that is the page where before you can, yeah, you'll click on continue to W3 preview. You'll come back, you make sure I agree check is still on for you, that the SSN that you check, everything is safe for you. And then you click on continue. So, okay, so when you come to this session, you are done. But it's going to allow you to print a draft to review, and you can even give it to your employees to review the W2 to so see if they agree. And let's see. And you'll make a copy. Usually, the format that you will come in, the copy that you are trying to save, will be in, in you may not get to open it. So what I would suggest is you print it. But then to save it, let me see if I have an option here. If you click on download, let's go back. It will give you the option to, to, to print and save, you know, the submitted W2W3 for review. If you click on download and you save it, it will save in a format that you won't be able to open. So what I would suggest you can do that. What I would suggest is you click on uh, points and in the where the printer name will show up, you can click on that drop down menu and save as PDF and you save it. So it will be able to save it for you in a PDF format. You can click on it, open it and print it out if you want. But just make sure you have a PDF icon next to the file name to make sure you have the right file that you can open later. Otherwise, the own format that it download for you, I don't think you'll be able to open it. But anyway, so when you review it, even if you didn't print it out, you click on that PDF, that you save and you review it, you agree, you come back to the website again, and then you will click on continue. The PDF that you download will have your WI, your WFID number, I believe, on top. So, like on that page that you are saving the download, that you click on to download and to print and save and review. So, you come back to the website and you click on continue. If everything 
is okay the way you expect and it will give you the option to submit it so and you think your uh, draft w2w3 is accurate you will click on submit this wage report so when you submit it it will give you the option let me see here it will give you the option um uh, to print a final official copy but before we go through that this was the draft that we open and review and before we submit we click on submit this wage report you open it and the w3 will be there and it's not a form you are going to mail to ssa or irs it is for your business record you are going to file online you um you are going to print the w2 w3 for your business record and to give to employees their w2s so what are the different W2s that you will print out after you submit W2 and W3 with Social Security Administration? First, you have the W3 that we just discussed. You have, that is for the employer record, your business record. You will have W2 copy 1 that you will give employee, each employee their W2 copy 1 that they will file when they are filing 10 for it with their state. They will file that with their states. So some states have city um, or county tasks. So copy copy one and copy two will go with the employee state 1040. So you will give copy one and copy two to the employee, and you will give the employee copy C as well of the W2 and that is for the employee's record, personal record. You will give the employee W2 copy B for the employee to file 10 for it with IRS as well. So this year we have copy D for your business to keep for that employer, for that employee W2. You keep the W2 copy D for your business record for each one of those employees that you file for. So, yeah, so those are the different W2s. And you have that for each employee, and then you have the W3. That will be the total, up to 50 W2s or 50 employees. So now that we agree with the entry on W3 and W2s, we'll come back to the website and we'll click on Submit this wage report. And that's you finally submitting it to Social Security Administration, your W2 and W3 for 2022. When you do that, you open a, um, a window asking you to save it. You can click OK and it will open a form for you to save and on the um, on the social security website, yeah, and again we save that and we name it. But when you know a uh, in fact is giving you the option to save that receipt that you submitted. So we encourage you to print this page for your own record, and that's why that window prompts you to save. So otherwise, you can just control P to pretty much have that print page. Like if you are going to print this, you can print it out, or you can just change the printer name to save as PDF to save it as well. But yeah, that's pretty much the page. After you submitted your W2, W3 to SSA, SSA for 2022, is having the totals and you have your W2, 
FID number, like, and the confirmation as well that you filed it. And they want you to keep those confirmation for four to seven years as a proof of filing date. So you will click on a yeah, print this page to save that confirmation and go to save official PDF. So click on that and it will open a page with W2 with WFID for this year that you filed for for you to click on. So you click on it and you will save it. So when you save it, you can just click on W E W R home to go to the main page. You are done submitting W2 and W3 with SSA for 2022. So that official um, report yeah, I print it, I save it as well. And when you click on EWR Home, it will take you back to the main page and you can just log off or log out. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Okay, so if your business is simple, and you have enough information you can work with to file your W2 and W3, that is the process. If there is some nuances to yours, then you might go to the IRS instructions that we, we um, 2002 general instruction for W2 and W3 to read it through. And when you are reading it, you can highlight things that you find important. So one important thing is when social, when W2 and W3 filing is due, the due date for W2 and W3 is January 31st. So you want to make sure you file with social security by January 31st, 2023. And if there is an issue they rejected, you will get email from Social Security, but you can go through it. You can actually log back into Social Security website, and when you go through the login process, instead of clicking on Create, Let's go all the way to so we are at the beginning. Let's check this one. View submit when you instead of clicking on create and review form W3 online that we did earlier. On this page, you can click on view submission status, check report status error and note information previously submitted, which is report. So yeah, if you wanted to see the status of what you submitted, a few days later, you can come back, log in, and click on view submission status. And that's where you will find that link to go to. So, but, we get back out of here. But let's see what the instruction has that we might um, find it interesting. Okay. So if you if I do not file the same return using paper form. That's what we talked about earlier. You do not mail anything to IRS or social security when you e file W2, W3 with SSA. So, yeah, e file, yeah. We talked about Form 944, but yeah, they do have, you know, uh, a lot of information on the form that You can read through what is related to your business that you find 
interesting. And if you have questions, um, you can call Social Security Administration 888-772-2970 in order to ask information if you're having some issue with um, your filing. Okay, so they do have, you know, group health insurance coverage, severance payment, and severance payment are wages subject to social security and Medicaid taxes. As no in section 15 or publication 15, we do have that publication on our website. You can click on the link to access the publication, or you can open it from irs.gov website as well. Severance payments are also subject to income tax withholding and FURA tax. So FURA is unemployment tax and only the employer pay that as you pay that. You do not withhold that from the employee salary. So, and they do have some publications that might be useful. And from W2C, if you are not, okay, so those are if you want to use paper form, but those are the corrected, if you want to correct. So who must file W3? Let's see if we have something for W2 first. Yeah, you do not download uh, those. So let's see. Who must file form W2? Great. You must file form W-2 if you have one or more employees to whom you made payments, including non-cash payment for the employees services in your trade or business during 2022. So that is pretty much what I was saying before. If you are an NLC task as an escort, or uh, an escort, you are the only employee at the moment in the business because you are the owner of the LLC tax as an escort. You are working in the business, you are the first employee in the business. If you have not hired anyone else and you are the only one and you didn't pay yourself anything, you pay yourself zero wages, zero dollar wages, or you collected no wages, you do not file W-2, W-3 with SSA. It is not necessary. So, you file W-2 if you have one or more employees to whom you made payment to. So, you will file for 944 regardless with IRS with zero wages. So when they try to reconcile with W2, they know that you didn't file W2 because you have zero wages. But you have to file Form 944 if that is required from you, or Form 941 if that's why it's required from, from you, even if you pay no wages to any employee during the year. So complete and file W-2 for each employee for whom any of the following applies. Even if the employee is related to you, you withheld any income, social security or Medicaid tax from wages, regardless of the amount of wages. Okay? And in our case, you notice that for our um, payroll spreadsheets, a small dollar amount, we withheld social security and Medicaid tax. Therefore, because we withheld social security and Medicaid tax from the employee's salary, we have to file W-2. Let's go back. That's what that point is. So if any one of those bullet points is made, you have to file W-2. So the first bullet point is regardless of their the total, the wages you paid to the employee, if you withheld federal income tax, social security tax, or Medicaid tax, you have to file W-2. You will have, you will have had, you will have had to withhold income tax if the employee had a claim no more than one withholding, okay? 
هر لومه سی از فاسو تازن سو فور دا ان دبلیو فور هر نقلم این فمشن سو سمتانز بیز آن دی دبلیو فور وین ایوری پی دی یو ها کارکلیرین دی ایسی میری فیدر این کنتاکس وی کل فرم دی امپلایی ویجیز ایف دی کلیم رار این فمشن دی دبلیو فور دات یو اند اپ اند اپ ویف زیرو تاس تو بی هور Yeah, you will find W2 in that instance as well. Because if that, it, those exemptions were not claimed, you have withheld federal income tax. That's what I mean. You pay 600 or more in wages, even if you did not withhold any income, social security or Medicaid tax. If you pay more than $600, you pay $600 or more to some, someone, even if you didn't withhold social security or Medicaid tax, You still need to file W-2 for that. So pretty much any employee that you pay $600 or more to, whether you withhold the service security or Medicaid tax, you will file W-2 for it. Any employee that you pay wages to, that you withheld social security and Medicaid tax, regardless of how small that wage is, that wage is, you file W2, W3. That's why the first bullet point was. Okay, so only in a very limited situation you will not have to file W2. This may occur if you were not required to withhold any income tax, social security tax, or Medicaid tax, and you pay the employee less than $600, such as certain election worker. So when you pay the employee $0, I think that is that situation where you are not required to file W-2 with SSA. So that is a very good point for us to learn Who must file W-3? Anyone required to file W-2 must file Form W-3 to transmit copy A of Forms W-2. Make a copy of Form W-3, keep it and copy D for employer of Forms W-2 with your record for four years. Be sure to use Form W-3 for the current year. But if you are filing electronically, then they have the link there. Yeah. So, and then they have the option who must sign. But we are e-filing it. And when you are e-filing, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. And let me see here. Oh, yeah. If you are using a reporting agent or a third party payroll service provider, you know, to file your W2 and W3 for you, you want it to make sure you know, that you want it to know that you are still responsible and therefore uh, you have to make sure that they actually file for you because you are the one that will be responsible for it if they didn't file. So be sure they Yeah, so your EIN on W-2s should match your Form 944 or Form 941 EIN that is on it. So let's see if there is anything else here. I don't even want to talk about extension. You want to file on time, please. Because there is more complications when you have to ask for an extension. But they have information there if you want to find it. So do not send cash, check, money order, or other payment with the form W-2s and W-3 that you submitted to the Social Security Administration. When you file Form 944 or Form 941 with IRS, and depending on the dollar amount that you owe, you might be required to make deposits of those withheld taxes, employment taxes, or you might be required or recommended to just pay that with your form, Form 944 or Form 941. So you add those 
voucher and check payment to the Form 944, if that's what you are filing, or Form 941, if that's what you are filing, and mail it to IRS. But you do not mail payment to Social Security Administration. You just file your W-2 and W-3 for all your employees with Social Security Administration, and you pay IRS those tasks that you withheld from the employee salary and how much your employer, your business, um, complemented um, for Social Security tasks and Medicaid tasks. You pay that with IRS. So we talk about the type of copies you will give to the employees and what you will keep for yourself. And uh, let's see if there is more information that we want to address. Yeah, well, if you have a rough IRA with your um, in your business, you might want it to read it through. Usually, the rough IRA will be included in the total wages because it's after tax contribution. So, but if you have for a traditional IRA, it will not include it in line one, but I think it will be included in the social security wages. So, but again, they go in detail in it. So, this near a rough contribution are subject to federal income tax withholding and social security and Medicaid tax withholding. So, they will be included in the W 2 wages if you have, if you offer half IRS to your employees and they contribute, the total wages will include what they contribute to toward those rough because it's after tax contribution to the retirement account. And they'll have an option for the deferred retirement account as well. And yeah, I like this too. Employee business expense reimbursement. Let's take a look at it. So reimbursements to employees for business expenses must be reported as follows. Generally, payment made under a contractual plan are excluded from the employee's gross income and are not reported on W-2. So, and I would suggest if you have a reimbursement plan in your business, you use the accountable plan. The accountable is when the employee report back to you how much they spend and you you approve and they give you any change back if there is change or yeah that's but if you are using non-accountable plan they do not report you in uh, the cost or uh, if there is any change they do not report those back to you the total employee reimbursed amount needs to be in the total wages okay so generally payment Okay, so I think we read that. However, if you pay a per diem or mileage allowance and the amount paid for sub paid for substantiated miles and or day travel exceeds the amount treated as substantiated on the IRS rule, you must report as wages on Form W2 the amount in excess of the amount truly as substantiated. So if you pay per diem and you'll be fine, but if you pay, like IRS has those um, standard mileage rates, you go with that, that's fine. If that's what you, that's what we use for employee reimbursement in our business, at least as the rule that I use in place but if what you paid is more than what that IRS standard is the excess between what IRS set as a standard mileage the standard deduction the standard mileage or travel expenses per day and what you pay the excess the difference between the two or the excess you will include that on W2 in the total wages. That's why they have line one wages, tips, other compensations. So that will go there. So that's something to keep in mind. 
So you must report as wages on Form W to the amount in excess of the amount truly as substantiated. The excess amount is subject to income tax withholding and social security and Medicaid tax. Report the amount truly as substantiated, that is the non-taxable portion in box 12 using code L. So, the SS is taxable, but I think you have to report, okay, they say to report the amount in SS. Report the amount in SS of the amount truly as substantiated on the W2. That SS is taxable. Report the amount truly as substantiated on line 12. I will have thought the whole amount you pay will be in the wages and the boss 12 will have the substantiated amount. But it makes sense. They want you to put the excess in like on line 1 for the total wages, on line 3 for the social security taxable wages and line 5, I believe, for the Medicaid Wait, taxable wages session that SS and on line 12 using code L you put that you know that portion that matches the IRS standard weight that's the sensory amount that is the non taxable portion okay but they have you know more on do you see that this the instruction at the bottom where they have those details they have more on it as well. So payment may under a non-accountable plan are reported as wages on Form W-2 and are subject to federal income tax withholding, security tax, and Medicaid tax. So if you don't hold your employee accountable for those business expenses that you are paying for, you include that in their wages. Okay, so for more information on accountable plan, on non-accountable plan, they have publication for CC3. You can read through and you can look at publication 15, section 5. And on our website, uh -oh, on our website, we have um, a session for federal forms when you if you're having issue pulling uh, finding forms publication from IRS websites you can try our website and in the menu in the sidebar we have federal forms and you, sh you will find the links so you can see if we have a form there that you are looking for or a publication or instructions to a form there, you can click on, you can find the link there that will take you straight to IRS website where that publication is and open it for you. So, did we open it? Let me see here. So you can see different type of phones. Okay. 
And when you click on one of the link, it will take you to IRS, to the form on IRS website, and you'll be able to download the form and read it. And publication 15 is employee years guide. So it's a good publication to read, to see what interesting things you can find that is related to your business. So, but, okay, so, oh yeah, I think that's inter the interesting things here as well. When you are now collecting, uh, when you are now withholding social security and medicators from employees, salary, they talk about it as well. So employees, social security and medicators paid by employer. If you pay your employee's share of social security and medicators rather than deducting them from the employee's wages, you must inclu include those payments as wages subject to federal income tax, social security and medicaid tax and federal unemployment taxes. So you have to back into it. That will be a part of everything you pay the employee and make those deductions. So if you pay your employee share of I'm not going to talk about that, but yeah. The amount to include as wages and our compensation is determined by using the formula contained in the discussion of employee portion of taxes paid by employer in section seven, publication 15.8. So but yeah, sometimes when you, when you are using a payroll spreadsheet, you can use gold seek. Let's say you want to pay yourself $250, but you know that you are going to, I'm just going to put here, employee B. Let's say you want to pay yourself $250, that's your, your take home, your take home employee net payments with a spreadsheet you can go seek it because you already have formula that is applying to the total wages you go to the net knowing how much you want to take home you want to find out how much the cross will be assuming the federal income tax the social security and the medicaid taxes formula are in place so uh yeah let's just the federal income tax you have to use publication 15 t to to do that calculations so there is now a fixed rule but you can just use a percentage to to do the calculation if that shows you the owner of the business but you click on uh, if you are using a spreadsheet you click on data there are what if analysis and you click on gold seek. So when you click on gold seek, first this you have to be your mouse, you have to click on the cell, the amount you know is going to be. There is a formula there, but you click there and you click on there what if analysis and you click on to value. So you want to pay yourself do you say 500 or 250? 250. By changing, you click on that cell by changing and you click on the, the wages. So you do not want formula there where you are going to click. So we have total wages that has the formula that is the total of payment to that employee. So you click on other compensation, for instance, and you click OK. So it's going to automatically calculate how much you need to pay yourself as a gross for social security to be withheld, medicators to be withheld for you to take 250 home. There is a calculation where you are going to do division as well, knowing the social security rates. Uh oh, yeah, you click OK when you are done. Knowing the social security tax and the medicators, the total of that is 765. I don't I, I think the formula they are talking about will help you with that. 
70cc5. So there is a division you have to do between that 250 you want to take and the total uh, percentage of 250, um, the social security tax and Medicaid tax we have from the employee salary to be able to find this, seven, uh, this wages to pay. So we can back into it as well. That would be 250 divided by that is giving me, I'm just using this number, this area to do it. It's giving me 92. And if I take this minus 0 0.765, I'm finding 16%. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm trying to back into it, but yeah. 250 divided by O, it should be O point, it should be 1.765. And if I take that, and I take that 250, no, it's not much anymore. But anyway, in one year, I have done that calculation, the video. But yeah, I have to think about it. But you can... Math mathematically back into this if you do not use gold seek formula and you know how much you want to pay yourself and you know the social security tax and medical tax will be hold from the employee salary there is a calculation to back into it because pretty much how much will you pay yourself if you know, those amount, uh, those taxes attached to these and the total of that X amount minus all those taxes will give you 250. So there is those X and Y you can put into the formula to find the formula, but we are not going to spend a lot of time on it. And let me get out of here. And publication 15.8, if you really want, you don't want to use gold seek. Publication A, let's see if we have it. And they say publication A, session 7. It should have that formula, session 7. Let's click on that. To see they have a formula there. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, well, we find those numbers, right? Open only two. So, let me make it a little bit. So, here is that. So, is 1 minus 0 0.0765. It's now the Okay, so let's go back to our spreadsheet again. Let me do it this, this area. I don't know how I found that own point and I'll be too earlier. But anyway, so you will do 1 minus, pretty much what I'm trying to do is 6.2% plus 1.45%. Let me go here. And if I could, I'm, I'm going to leave it there so that we can see the, let me move it here so that we can see the whole formula. And I'm going to put equal, and I'm going to click here so I can calculate it. Uh oh, what is the amount? Okay, anyway, equal one minus, O C two plus O point O one four five. So that gives us that O point ninety two. Let's see if we have thirty five. Yeah, 
That's that. So if you are asking what why I'm using those percentage is the social security tax we hold from the employees portion of wages and 1.2 Medicaid tax we hold from the employees wages as well. That is. 6.2 and 1.45 it total to 7.65 percent so now that you have that you will do 250 that you want to pay yourself let's see that will be accurate 250 you want to pay yourself i'm tempted to divide by this amount yeah that's what you will do so you take that amount you want to pay yourself, divided by it. this formula, it will give you this 27071 that you that that will be your gross wages for you to take 250 home. Assuming if you are going to withhold federal income tax, you have um If you have a formula, a percentage for federal income tax you want to withhold for yourself, you can include it into that, you know, into this formula where we have the additional so that you can take all of that into consideration for you. But without the federal income tax added to it, just social security and Medicaid, that's the formula that works. So, and yeah, and they explain the formula here. But I think the way they are doing it. They are taking the gross times that open only two to find the. They are taking. Yeah, they are taking the gross times that open only two to find the net. But because usually you know how much you want to take home, but just don't know how much you will with you will pay as a gross salary for the social security and Medicaid to be deducted from it. That's how I explain it. But if you just take 250 and later on you wanted to see the social security and Medicaid that your business pay double for the half that should go to the employee uh, wages, you do the multiplication instead from the net you pay comes that open and it too should tell you the gross you pay comes down and it will give you the net. So that means you have to do the division to find the gross you take the net divided by that open and it too. So but yeah I'm sorry if I confuse you but yeah I think that's good to know as well. So let's see what is we found Interesting here. Friend benefits. Yeah, if you pay friend benefits in your business, you might want to read through it, but if you don't, it may not be applied to you. So, friend benefit include all taxable friend benefit in box one of the U2 as wages, tips, and other compensation if applicable. In box three and five as Medicare, as social security wages and Medicare wages. Although not required, you may include the total value of fringe benefits in box 14. However, if you provide your employee a vehicle, you must include the value of any personal use in box 1, 3, and 5 of Form W-2. You must report social security and Medicaid tax, but you have the option now to withhold federal income tax if you notify the employee and include the value of the benefit in box 5, in box 1, 3, 5, and 14. They have publication. Uh, 15B for French benefits you can read through and they have some uh, notice here so so they have a rule that do not permit employee to deduct and reimburse employee business expenses from 2018 to for if you include 100% of the vehicle annual lease value in the employee income, the employee will not be able to deduct expenses attributable, attributable 
contributable to the business use as an employer provider vehicle. So pretty much what they are saying is before when you file 1040, there is a exception on Schedule A for employee who reimburse expenses. So pretty much they take the option out for 2018 to 2025 for if you do not reimburse your employees for business expenses under accountable plan they cannot claim those who reimburse expenses on their 10 for uh, on their schedule a for 10 for it so that's something to keep in mind so if you have your own business you are using your personal car for business purposes and you want to deduct, you want to use a IRS standard mileage rate. If you do not pay that to yourself, you won't be able to deduct it on your, uh, you know, on your 1040 as in reimburse expense. It goes through Schedule A, but it's not really an option anymore. And even if there is one, this is that it's not going to end on your 1040 because the standard mileage, the standard deduction when you file 1040 is high for your schedule A and the money deduction to surpass that, it has to be a expensive. So if you're, you are taking standard deduction on your 1040, anything you are claiming on your schedule A is not going to land on your 1040. The standard deduction will be there. It could help your state, but your reimburse employee expenses are not going to be on your schedule A for a while. Okay, so yeah, I think if you scan through, you find something that's related to your business, you can um, read it and highlight it so that it's easy for you to find later. So if you have deferred retirement plan your business, they have things that you will read. So a simple retirement account, it will go on your line one total wages, but it's not going to go, it's not going to be, it's not going to be included in boss one, because boss one will be dependent on to calculate a boss two federal income tax withheld, and those retirement accounts are deferred type of account, retirement account. So you are not going to include that on a boss one, but you will include it in social security and Medicare wages, wages, boss three and five. So but do include in boss three and five. So they talk about that. And then you will include that contribution on in boss 12 with code D or S. So you can read the end they have employer matching as well how that works. So if it does not apply your business, you don't worry about that. But if it, did too, if it does, then you will wait for it to make sure you are filing properly. So, and then they pretty much go through how you will complete W2 and we went through that already. I just want to go through the instructions to see if there is something additional that we want to talk about for you to have the knowledge necessary for you to file your W-2 and W-3 accurately. That way you won't have to go back and correct it. And on page 16 of the instruction, they talk about the different type of wages that will you know, be taken into consideration and you can read through that if you have French benefits offered. You can click on French benefits as well so that you can see what that is. And they have start tutorial employee and I think that's a good one as well. If you have those options, you will, uh, you can read through it to see what is, uh, which type of employee is considered a statutory employee. So, and we can go to that. They have the different type of codes. Statutory employee. Check this box for statutory employee. 
whose earnings are subject to Social Security and Medicaid tax, but not subject to federal income tax withholding, to not check these bonds for common, common, common law and price. They are workers. They are workers who are independent contractors under the common law rule, but are treated as statute, statute as employees. They are called statutory employees. And they try to explain them. A driver who distributes beverage other than milk or meat, vegetable foods, a full time life insurance sales agent. An individual who works at home on material or goods that you, the business owner, supply and that must be returned to you or to a person you name if you also furnish specification for the work to be done. That person is a statutory employee of yours. So you may not be called federal income tax on them, but you will withhold social security and medicators and you check that box if that apply. So they have for detail on statutory employees and common law employees section one of publication 15A goes into it in detail. So that's good to know. Amount reported on related employment tax form 941, 944, and W2 should agree with the amount reported on form W3. If there are differences, you may be contacted by IRS and SSC. So that's that. And pretty much, yeah, we discussed kind of payer, payer, payer and what kind of employer. And I think pretty much we touch base with everything. So, yeah, reconcile the amount shown on both three. Yeah, we discussed those reconciliations to reduce the discrepancy between amount reported on W3 and W2 and from 941 and from 944. So they gave you options or different things you can do. And let's see. And if you are going to correct a W-2 after you submit it, W-2C is going to be used. You have instructions on that from page 26, I believe, or 27 instead. They have you know, information on how you do that. So hopefully you will file your form properly. That way you won't have to do any correction. And then they have the reference guide for code 12 that you can go through to see if you put a number on box 12, what code you will use. So thank you so much for watching. I'm Afiavi Lieberman, creators of Liberman Consulting LLC YouTube channel and in Asso.com, our blog. On our blog, you can find free downloads that you can use to manage your finances or to manage your business successfully. And you can access them. Once you go through the free download, you will have the list of them that if you find a form that you can be useful for you, you will be able to access it. You don't need to enter your email to access those forms and download them. And we have free payroll. We have three of them, free payroll spreadsheets. This will help with full up federal unemployment tasks. We have a sample version. That's the one that I use for this example, free payroll. A cell workbook could be 
I think federal income tax will help calculation is another one as well. And we have full payroll of workbook. We have payroll and employer. Your federal income tax will help for 944. And this will be probably the one that, the simple one that I am using. But as you can see, we have multiple um, version in our free download, some more complicated than others, depending on your business model, you can see which one works for you, and you can make adjustments to the spreadsheet to tailor to your business need, and make sure the formula, the formula is not broken, because you are responsible of your numbers, so make sure the formula is doing what you expect from from me, this pressure is doing what you expect from me because it's there to assist you but not to replace you. So we do have um, federal, uh, federal task form and instructions. We have those links that if you are looking for a file, a form, instructions, and publication on IRS websites, and you are having issue finding it. You can check our, you know, our website, ninasoap.com, and you'll be in the description as well to, you know, to see if you can find the form you are looking for. We thank you very much for your time. We thank you, you all that subscribe to our channel, and we thank you for all your comments. Thank you for watching our videos. We have LibreDownload.com for templates that we sell as well. And templates that we have at NinaSoap.com, they are free. And if you want to check our online stores, you can access that through NinaSoap as well. We have custom apparel and stationery. We have digital download. We have natural product store and we have supply store as well so you can access them and the digital download will have templates that you can use to manage your finances and to manage your business as well and please remember w2 w3 that you need to file to social security administration is due by the end of january so please get it done on time so that you have time to um print Form 944 or Form 941, whichever is required from your business, and mail it to IRS on time because it's due by the end of January as well. And then you have unemployment tax. Um, yeah, federal employer, annual <laughs> unemployment tax folder that is due by the end of January as well. So there is a lottery business taxes that you are going to find that are employ, employment related that are due at the beginning of, at the end of January, and you have to file W-2 with your state as well. So make sure you access, you go to your state website if you are doing it online, you file W-2 with your state, and you might file your last quarter for uh, for the state withholding form as return as well, and you will file a uh, state sales tax and state return use tax as well. So make sure you get your state taxes filed on time. Thank you so much.